Hello and welcome to Unraveled Game Thoughts. The videos titled Gloomhaven Solo Scenarios are my personal playthroughs of the solo scenarios for Gloomhaven. Um, these, to my knowledge, don't come with the basic game. I think in one of the recent Kickstarters you were able to order the solo scenarios and I believe prior to that this is how I was able to find these you could download them and print them out and uh, laminate the the uh, rewards for completing those they this is spoiler heavy so if you are playing Gloomhaven or plan to play Gloomhaven and you don't want any spoilers for your game turn the video off now don't watch this there are going to be card spoilers for the characters that I'm playing through and there are going to be uh, possibly some well obviously the solo scenarios themselves would be spoiled I don't know how much else is a huge spoiler perhaps some of the enemy uh, mechanics if you haven't encountered those enemies in Gloomhaven yet but I just want to give fair warning at the front end uh, that that there are spoilers here and I don't want anybody's game to be ruined by continuing to watch this and then finding out um, you know that there was information they really wish they didn't have uh, if you're just not sure about Gloomhaven and you want to see something a little crunchier about it that would swing you one way or the other, then maybe these spoilers won't be that bad. You will be okay with seeing them. It might be the tipping scale of, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go in on Gloomhaven. Um, but I would want you to be aware that if you purchase the game, it will not come with these solo scenarios. Uh, you have to get those separately. I think you probably have to get them on a Kickstarter or something now or go through the, um, sell a fair game site to to find them anymore i've done a few others and failed and probably will likely fail in a few of my playthroughs here but uh you can just select a different set of cards and try to play again and uh hopefully learn from my my experience but there you have it spoiler alert proceed at your own risk Cheers and good afternoon. Welcome back to Unraveled Game Thoughts. And <clears throat> I have been really looking forward to doing this solo scenario. There are actually several solo scenarios I've been wanting to do. But here I am doing this one. Again, spoilers. Turn back now if you don't want anything spoiled. Spoiled? If you don't want anything spoiled. So, <clears throat> usually I would use an app to track a lot of the, the bits and pieces, the uh, uh, damage for the uh, different enemies in this scenario, or really in any scenario. However, I'm using my phone to record. So, I have my enemy uh, initiative cards and my enemy uh, statuses out here. I will read the scenario so you have an understanding of what I'm doing. It is just uh, me, uh, the scoundrel in this particular case, and I have a companion to start this one out with, uh, which is represented by the letter A and 40 hit points, which you'll see here in a minute why it's 40 hit points. But <clears throat> let's read the scenario and then go from there. You interested in a job? A burly Volrath with a scar running down the length of his left cheek stands over you. Unscrupulous work is the only reason anyone hangs out in the foul stench of the burnt onion. It certainly isn't the company or the watered down piss flavored beer. You tell the Volrath as much, as flippantly as possible, and he scoffs at you. Good. You look like you can handle yourself in a fight, and we'll be going up against some tough customers. He sits down at your table and introduces himself as Rickarn. 
He begins to tell you about an armory held by one of the lesser mercenary guilds up at the Traveler's District. The guild is going out on some massive hunt tomorrow night, and there won't be many left behind to guard the bolt, Rikarn says. They'll be well equipped, but I figure between the two of us, we should have it covered. Without any other concrete plans on your calendar, you agree to the job. It is why you are here, after all. The following night, Rikarn leads you to an expensive-looking house in North Gloomhaven and walks around to a hidden back entrance leading down into the basement. He grins and charges down the stairs. <clears throat> Special rules. Rikarn, letter A, represented by a numbered token, has 15 plus 5 times L hit points. So I am 5 times level. I am level 5 in this particular scenario. You have to be at least level 5 for these. Uh, and so it is 25 plus the 15 is 40. Uh, and he is an ally to you and an enemy to all monster types. He acts at initiative 49 each round, performing move 4, attack 4, using the monster attack modifier deck, which we have right here. And that is shuffled. All city guards increase their shield value by 3, so normally... They are shield one, unless it's the elite guard, in which case he is shield two. So they're going to be shield four and shield five, uh, and the elite has retaliate one. Good times. And then the stone golems increase their shield value by four. They start out at shield two anyway, so they're going to be shield six, or if it's an elite golem, in this case, it's going to be a shield seven. Ugh. When the treasure tile is looted, this tile up here, if Rikarn is still alive, read one. Otherwise, the scenario is complete when the treasure tile is looted and all enemies are dead. So, <clears throat> I've got my, my ally here, uh, and he, I'm going to try to let him do some damage. I hope, if you are watching this, you are at least moderately familiar with Gloomhaven. If you're not, again, spoilers, probably not the best time to jump into Gloomhaven, but maybe this will uh, give you some, some, in, in, uh, some idea is if you would want to invest in the game itself. I'm playing a solo with one character. Usually you would have two characters. Even playing by yourself in the main game, you would typically have two characters you'd be controlling. So the one character is, is kind of difficult. And since I'm in a dark and dangerous dungeon, I am drinking a dark, not really dangerous beer. A Yeti. All right. So uh, I've got my cards. I at Level 5, I basically just kind of, instead of porting this from a game I was already doing, I just leveled them up because I've played with this character up to level 9 before, but I decided to just do it at level 5. Uh, and see what I could accomplish. So, here we go. Um, I need to pick a couple of cards to use. So, let's see. Uh, now, he's going to move at 49, and he's going to move for and attack for four. I don't know what the initiative on these guards is. I cannot honestly remember uh, how fast or slow they go. I feel like they're relatively moderate Um and it's only these two I got to worry about because this door is closed and until it's opened, I'm not going to have to sweat it too much. Um, <clears throat> and with the golem and these two in here, I definitely don't want to have to fight all of these things at once. So, and he doesn't have to be alive for me to complete the adventure, which is helpful. He's got a lot of health, so hopefully he stays alive for a good bit. I need him to get some hits in here. But I want to go, I think I want to go later than him. And so I definitely would like one of these cards to go off so that I can go after him so that he'll be next to some of these enemies because I get more bang for my buck if he's next to enemies. So the question is, which of these would be the best? Um, this can kill a normal enemy which is fantastic as long as it is adjacent to none of its allies and adjacent to any of my allies. Who? I wonder if it'd be better to wait till that room to try to kill one because uh, they are going to be 
set uh, they're going to be set up that way. One thing I will say about a solo scenario, it does encourage you to read the whole scenario to kind of see who the enemies are uh, at, before you figure out which cards you're going to use for your character. Um, because these are very... I, I've, I've only played a couple. Uh, I've only won one solo scenario thus far. Uh, they are pretty challenging, and so you really want to craft your card choices uh, pretty carefully based on the scenario. So you do get kind of see what's in all the rooms uh, before you head in there, and you're playing the, the base game. You're not necessarily going to know that information until you've opened the door, and then you set up your enemies for that room. In this case, I just set it all up ahead of time because it encourages you to read the scenario. So uh, let's see... Um, I think he's going to be next to a target, so I think getting a single out might be a great way to go. And then I just need a, a move, and if I move three, I should be able to get near somebody. And I, this is get, gets me advantage, but I don't know that I want to use my advantage card just yet. I might want to use it in another room. So I think I'm going to go this route and use these two cards, and I'm going to go at initiative 85. So he always goes at 49, and now we need to draw, I'm going to move this out of the way slightly, we need to draw initiative cards for the monsters. So the stone golem, and actually I'm going to turn that back over and reshuffle it because we don't need the draw for the stone golem. Only the guard is in the room. We're just going to see what his initiative is, or their initiative. So they're going at 35, and they're going to move uh, one less than their normal move, which normally they move at two. Uh, in this case, they're going to move one, and they're going to attack uh, at uh, a distance of range two at plus zero. So their attack is three. Uh, they normally wouldn't hit at range, but in this case they are. So they're going to move one. He's the closest uh, ally, so number two is going to move. And it's going to draw an attack. Base three attack plus zero is going to do three damage to this fella. So he's at 37. And... Then this guy is also going to do the same and draw a modifier of plus one. So that's going to be four damage, and he's going to go down to 33. Uh, normally in the main game, this would be your health. This would be your uh, experience, but he doesn't gain experience. It's just, uh, he's just, we're just monitoring his health. So I'm using these dials to hone in on 40 health because it doesn't go up to 40 on the left side. Okay, that's him, uh, or rather that's them, and then he's going to go, he's going to pick the lower number of the two, he's going to go one, and he's going to hit for four at minus one, so his hit is three, and if we recall the shield is plus three, so he's shielded, he will take no damage, that won't uh, impact uh, guard number two there. All right, so now it is my turn, and I want to move three. One, two, three. I want to get behind this fella, and I uh, my move three, and then I poison. So he is going to get a poison token. I'm going to do my discard pile there, and my loss pile. I'll move this over slightly, so my loss pile can go next over to that area. I don't need any lost cards yet, but just in case. All right, so he is going to be poisoned, so we will put a poison token on number two. And then I'm going to hit him. He is adjacent to an ally of mine, so I'm going to hit for a base of five. Uh, another poison, but I keep drawing. I got pierce three. That's nice. Another poison. Wow. And zero. So... Five with a pierce three. Well, <clears throat> that means, so he's got shield four. So three goes through the shield. He still has a shield. I forget if pierce, 
pierce three. So I think with a shield of four, pierce would only go through three of those. So he still has one shield in place. So even with the pierce three, I'm going to get two damage through with the pierce, which is not bad. So he's going to take two damage. And I'm doing a total of five. So I think the other non-pierce damage would still be covered by the shield, but he's poisoned. Um, so he would take, uh, let's see, six damage. I, I'm debating if I should look up the pierce ruling. So the total would be five. The poison makes it six. I didn't draw any extra, bone, extra damage. So six damage total. Pierce three, he still has a shield of one. And so uh, that's going to block. Uh, Pierce three is going to go up to that shield of one. One gets blocked, uh, but the Pierce three is going to push through. And uh, so we're piercing through three, through three of the shields. So there's one shield left. That blocks one damage and then he'll take five damage total i believe is how that works so uh, if you watch and i have butchered that ruling then definitely let me know but i'm i'm going to play it that way the pierce three goes to the first three shields and then the rest of the damage will go through uh after that that next shield that's beyond the first three and he had four that's right so five damage what's his total damage here eight he has eight health so he's down to uh, almost killable level. All right, round two. And I'm not keeping track of my rounds here. I probably, probably wouldn't hurt just to see. So I'll put it on round two. Uh, we don't have any elements in the air. So moving on, I gotta pick cards. Here we go. I'm, I'm a little slow. It's been a while since I've played Gloomhaven in person and I definitely you typically use the app and not these cards so that's a little bit uh, uh, feels a little funny to me uh, trying to decide what to do here all right so I'm probably going to be next to an enemy still they might be next to each other which might mean I just want something adjacent to my my, my allies uh, he would be a good fit Targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies. If I go early, I could probably get that in real quick. Um, a wound wouldn't hurt. Advantage on all attacks wouldn't hurt. Mm, for each of your allies adjacent to the target. That's an attack four. I wonder, that one I might end up having to use. He's already poisoned, so I think getting a hit on him pretty early is going to be helpful. Uh, I want to save my advantage a card. I'm going to go with the plus. I'm going to go at initiative four and see if I can take that enemy out and then let him do some damage to the other one, hopefully. So I'm going at four. Guard's going at 15, getting an extra shield. Ooh, man, I'm glad I went at 4 and not 16. And he's at 49, so I'm going to go first. Um, I am definitely going to hit that guard. I'm going to add plus 2 attack to all my attacks this round, targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies. He is not adjacent to an ally, so I'm going to get plus 2 to my attack. And then I'm going to attack for 3, 4, 5, because he's adjacent to an ally. So my... Uh, five, six, seven is going to be my base attack. Minus one is six, and he has shield four, so I'm going to get two damage through to him, and then it's going to be his turn. Oh, I forgot about the poison. So it would have been three damage through because of the poison, um, which would be eight damage and that would have been exactly enough to 
take that guy out. I'm not even 100% sure that I should put coins down in this one, but I will go ahead and put them down for the sake of sticking with the normal Gloomhaven rules. Um, right, so now the other guard goes. He's going to shield one, so now they're at shield five, and he's going to attack, but he's only attacking in his area, and he's not moving, and he would poison, but he doesn't hit anybody, so his turn is done. And then because it's got a little... Uh, rotation symbol there we're gonna shuffle this back into uh, shuffle all these back into the main deck of guard cards okay so now my my buddy here is gonna go forward one and he uses monster deck and he is going to hit for four plus zero so he gets nothing on the hit uh, because the shield is at five mm. so that is that. All right. New turn. Um, this went to my discard, and one of the things I'm going to have to do is I got to get through here because I've only got nine cards, and every every time I get through all these cards, I'm going to lose one. So I need to get through this relatively quickly without losing too many cards. Um, I'm kind of thinking. Hmm. It's a tough one. Um, I could move forward for and gain advantage uh, and hit him for a wound. That's going to hit for four plus wound him because the target's adjacent to an ally. One adjacent normal enemy that is adjacent to one. That's, that's probably worth going after mm. I definitely don't want to use that so I'm not going to use my invisible yet the wound will make sure he eventually gets taken care of and the poison well I'm thinking the advantage move forward with advantage might be a good option. So I'm going to go there and use a three as my initiative. He's going at 50. My fella is going at 49. Okay. So those, they're all, they're going to move zero, which means they're going to move two, which means if I open that door, he's going to move two, but they're not hitting with any range, which is fantastic. I don't want that. Um, but it would get us closer to that room. Whew. Tough, 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 tough. It also means the golem is going to get... I think I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Um, one, two, three, four. I might be making a mistake, but we'll see. Uh, and that's going to open that door. I'm going to gain advantage on all my attacks this round. And then I am going to attack him at advantage for a base of four. All right. So that's one draw, two draw. I'm going to take the best. So that's five total. His shield is four. That gets me one damage through and he gets a wound on soldier five. So one damage and a wound. And then this guy's going at 49. He's not going to move anywhere because he's already hitting. And he's hitting for negative two. That's it for him. Uh, now the soldier, we have soldier six, soldier three. So technically soldier three goes first. He's going to move two. And then soldier five will go. We also have to draw for the stone golem because it's actually 28. It would move. Uh, it moves one, so this one's going to move two because it moves plus one, and then it's going to stone golem's going to suffer one damage. And this is elite number five. All right, so he's going to suffer a damage, and this soldier number five is going to suffer damage because of his wound, and he is going to hit this guy for. A base of three plus a zero, 
and I had initiative, so he's actually going to hit me because I have initiative. So let me get my deal here set to zero, and I start with 14, 12 life, nope, 14 life. And so I'm going to take three damage, one, two, three, so I'm down to 11. I'll just put that off to the side. All right. Gotcha. So we are not hitting at the damage rate that I would like here, unfortunately. Um, hmm. Traps are, what are traps? Um, level three, let me do a little search here under Gloomhaven and see what I can find. All right. Do, do, do. Gloomhaven traps at level three. All right. Uh, trap damage and effects. That's what we want. Uh, huh. All right. I just want a basic how much do trap damage? Uh, da, da, da. Huh, this is not giving me the answer for my teaches two glossary. Scenario level, average level of characters divided by two, so the damage is still three. It's normally three, but this is a level three. Um, let's look at the rule book. Yeah. Um, oops. Scenario level is three. Trap damage is five. Okay, that's important because I might want to use these traps to help me with these guys. Um, hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, I don't like the options here. Let's see, I kind of want to save that card. Move three, horse and enemy to perform move one. Huh. This is a tough one. Well, I feel like just taking that guy out is going to be the easiest possible thing to do. Um, and I'll do five damage to him. Oh, I'm going late. That's real late if I do that. I might end up using this for a basic move, so I'll save that card. So we'll do that. Um, let's do this. And then we're going to have a guard card and a stone golem. So he's going at 11. I'm going at 12. He's going to retaliate three at range three. So definitely don't want to hit the golem. I'm going at 12. Uh, none of his allies are adjacent to any of your allies. So he fits, he's adjacent to one of my, my allies and then not adjacent to any of his. So we're just going to take him out and make life easy for that room. Get that done. And then I have pull two, range three, but I am not within range. So I am going to pull back. Hmm. Actually, do I need to do that? They're going to move to... I do not want to be in range of their move. So I'm going to just grab that coin 
and yeah, that's all I'm going to do. A basic move with that. Why did I put that over there? That should go here and here. And then 49 is going to go, this fella, and he's going to move one, two, three, four, and hit for four uh, for a total of three against a shield. Nothing. So that's it. He's, let's see, who moves first? He's first. So he's going to go one, two, because he wants to move around this trap and not through it. He is just going to hit for a base. Oh my goodness. He's hitting for two or three, four, five. So we're down to 27 with him. Ugh, that is awful. All right. And then uh, that's it. That's it for them. So I'm going to do a long rest on my turn. And I will just put that there. And I'm going to draw cards for them, which I think it's turn four. And they're going at 15. They're going at that. He's going to shield one, retaliate two. So he's got a shield of five. And the stone golem is going to move at plus one. He normally moves one. So he's going to move two. Uh, one, two. And range of three. One, two, three. He's going to pull two, one, two, and immobilize my guy. So he is immobilized and cannot move. Um, and following monster rules, I think he hits next. He's going to hit the closest one to him with uh, lowest initiative, which is going to be this guard which has a shield of five and that's going to do nothing except he's going to take two damage because of the retaliate. So now we're down to 25 and now I long rest. So I have to pick a card that I'm okay losing. Um, well, this is a tough one. I don't want to lose my kill enemy. I don't want to lose gaining advantage on everything. I like adding plus two to all my attacks, and I don't want to lose that. I don't think I'm ready to lose my heal. So I hate to do this, but I think I'm going to go with the flanking strike and get all my cards back and go on to the next round. All right, so that's that. Let's see. Oh, you know what? Oh, this guy, number five, was dead. I forgot to take his wound and damage token off, so... All right, here we go. Let's see what we can do here. He is, well, he's not a mobile anymore. He was just a mobile on his turn, and now his turn is gone, so he's good. I think I probably ought to take that guy out. That probably would help because I don't want to lose. And now I just need a good move. Um, one, two, three. I need a move of four at least. Um, so, so basically that leaves us with one of these, one of these cards. Um, and this one is probably, well, the wound I think is going to be very handy against that golem because it is awfully large and I need it to take a little bit more damage. So I think we're going to go with this one and I will go at three and we will see what happens. So these get shuffled together because of their last draw. And then we will, uh, all right. So there we go. We're going to draw and we're going to draw. So they're going at 70, they're going at 83. Um, he's going at 49. I'm going at three. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and just knock him out. He's a normal enemy. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm sorry. I'm not following the rules that I would read. One, two, three, four. Ugh. 
I'm going to cheat a little bit because I didn't read that card. He's got to be adjacent to none of his allies, which he isn't, but he's got to be adjacent to one of my allies. So that would not have worked at all. Uh, I would be doing something completely different. Um, the question is what? Uh, he's only wounded. These are not very powerful. Um, move three, attack three, not bad. He's not adjacent to allies. That's not going to help. Um, I also did a long rest last turn, so I would have healed two. Forgot to knock that out. I don't need a heal uh, for each of your allies adjacent to target. That's not going to help. So really, this one might be the best option. Um, I could, I suppose, set up, but I, I think it's too early to set up for some of these other things. So whew, I could try to go late, and but he's going to probably, mm, if I go late, I have, that might be better, actually. If I go late, then I have a chance of doing that. So I could go, I, I could choose 88. Actually, I would have done the same thing knowing that he's going to target my guy. And, you know, I'm going to stick with the same move I had initially planned, except I will adjust my initiative uh, as opposed to anything else. So we'll do it that way. So instead of me going first, I'm going at 88. So then uh, he's going to go first. And he's going to target the guard who has the closest initiative. And he is going to hit the guard for four. Guard has a shield of four. Nothing happens to the guard. Um, and then the guard is going to go. And guard three is going to go first. He's not going to move at all. He's just going to attack for plus one. And that's going to be four damage. So now my guy's down to 21. And then this guard's going to go, he's going to move one space, and he's going to attack for plus one for a total of four damage. No, that will be five damage. So now I'm down to 16. Not me, but my buddy. But he has moved into place, which is helpful. Uh, and then I'm going to 88, so the golem's going to move. He's going to attack at minus one, and his attack is for four. So he is going to attack straight up for four, and uh, my guy is down to 12. Whew. This is going to get real hard real quick. One, two, three, four. Now we can take that guy out, but I had to let my guy take a hit to do it. That's discarded. Next round. All right, that was... Man, this guy is taking a beating like nobody's business. Um, I wonder if I can... I could do that. That's a pretty good move. I could pull him uh, through the trap, and that would help quite a bit. Um, pull, pull. And then I could still hit him uh, with a pretty good hit, and he'd be next to an ally. Uh, so I'd hit him for a pretty good wallop. I'm going to go at 12 and see what happens. 55, 90. All right, let's see. Um, so if I'm going first at 12, I'm pulling and pulling. Trap goes away and he takes five damage. So number three is taking the five damage. He's gonna be there. And then I am going to uh, hit him for a total of five. Yeah, base five. Let's see what happens. Six, his shield is four. So I'm gonna get two hits through. So he's at seven, um, and then my guy is going to hit this one with a lower initiative with a base uh, four hit. He gets a crit miss, 
and then the guard's gonna go he's gonna move and attack uh, so he the first thing he's gonna do is attack he gets oh he's hitting me with a crit hit oh. so he's hitting me for six uh, which is gonna put me down to um, seven that's unfortunate and then he is strengthening himself bummer and then the golem is going to hit at four five minus one is four he's just hitting my companion and well he was gonna hit for five oh yeah minus one is four so my companion is down to eight all right i'm not doing good at keeping my companion alive here all right so that is that and these get shuffled and the monster modifier deck is also going to get shuffled all right let's see it's not looking good in my opinion we haven't even gotten the second door open yet this is going to be a tough a tough deal i'm thinking i might need to consider I would say consider doing a higher level, but I think my level has to match the, uh, oh, requirements, scoundrel level five. So I think my scoundrel has to be, I don't know if that's at least five or just level five. I might have to take a look at that. Okay. Um, yeah. So next round, guard doesn't take much to knock out. I can hit for four. Hmm. I'm not going to get around targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies. He's adjacent to none of his allies, so that could be uh, a good solid hit. And then that could be a good... Um, mm. Actually, I think I'm going to go with that one because I'll, I'll, I want 11 initiative and I want to see if I can get him knocked out so we got 83 and 50 and 49 so 83 i'm gonna add plus two to all my attacks targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies he's adjacent to no allies so we're gonna hit him and then i'm hitting for four six so base six plus a wound okay whoo uh, that's going to get the damage through and kill him before he can even use his strengthen token there. So done. And then guard is out. And then uh, Gollum is going to attack for minus one all adjacent enemies. He's not going to move. He is going to hit for uh is four three for five knocking my guy down to a three so pretty soon i'm not going to get the advantage of having anybody next to him i forgot that my guy was going to hit him actually he would have hit the golem who has a shield of three oh he's been hitting for five shoot he should have been hitting for one more every time and moving one more because he's elite. Uh, shield three plus four shield seven. So even that wouldn't have helped, but the golem would have then drawn that one, which would have been attack five minus one. But I'm going to leave it on there at five because I think there were a couple of hits where he should have had extra. So I'm going to just say he hits for five. He takes five. That kind of evens that out. So I'm not totally cheating. I'm just trying to adjust for what I've made mistakes on already. Okay. Wow. Okay. So this time, going at 33. Totally forgot to keep track of my rounds. I'm not going to worry about it. We're only going to draw for the Golem, who goes at 28. So he's going first. And move, plus one, attack, minus two, range three, pull two. So he's hitting for three. 
Uh, he's not going to have to move. He is hitting at range, which means he's going to hit at disadvantage. So base three at disadvantage, he still knocks him out. So my guy is dead, and it's just me and Mr. Gollum trying to do something here. All right. Hmm. Um. Hmm. I could use a. All I have to do is loot that. Hmm. Two, three, and let's heal. One, two, three. Let's do that. And I will not mess with him, but I am going to short rest because now I'm at the point where trying to fight all these enemies and defeat them. And I think, do I have to kill all the enemies? All city guards, oh wait, represented by a number. All city guards increase their shield. Treasure. And all enemies are dead. I do have to defeat all the enemies. So racing to loot the treasure won't help me particularly well. Um, so actually, that being the case, yeah, we'll just, uh, I would have, wait, one, two, three. I would have gone one, two, three so that I can long rest this round. That's what I would have done. So I'm long resting. All right. And he is going to move uh, minus one. He's going to move one. And he's not next to me to attack. And then I long rest. And the reason I would have long rested is so that I can gain two health back and then pick a card I want to lose. I definitely need that. Hmm. Hmm. I need that. Man. That's pretty handy. This is just going to be an attack for. Uh, so that one's probably the best one to lose. Um, and let's see. Oh. Oh, actually, no, this one, because I won't be able to kill anybody outright anymore because I don't have any allies. Whoop de doo. All right. Man. Well, this is going to be a very, very hard to scenario to uh, beat, given that. Um, because he is. Uh, he's just going to be tough. Um, I mean, I have to get through a shield of six and he has yeah shield six Ugh. so unless i get pierce which both of my pierce cards are drawn i am probably not going to be getting through it so i'm going to go at 93 and see what he draws he's drawn a 72 so attack one range three one two three he is out of range he's not moving he suffers two damage okay well, I will take that. It's fantastic. He's got 15 damage. We still got a long ways to go. However, the problem is I he didn't move far enough to help me. So that's going to hurt because I'm going to lose this card and I can't make him move into a trap. 
Shoot. Well, I can heal three, which basically I can heal two. And I will move one, two, for what it's worth. Not much. And then it's my turn. Or rather, it's my, I'm going to pick a card. This is not going very well. I'd like to gain advantage on all attacks. And we'll just hit for four and see if we get lucky. And I'll go at three. I don't think I'm going to win this one because I don't have a companion and most of my cards are beneficial based on having a companion nearby. So uh, this should have been shuffled earlier. I just forgot to do it. So we're going to shuffle those. And uh, it is not looking well. I think this one is not going to go well for me. I should have... I don't know. My companion rushed in there pretty fast, so he kind of goes full force. And I might need to rethink some of these cards here to see if I can do it better next time through. All right, so he's going to 83. I'm going at 3. 1, 2, 3, 4... And I'm gaining advantage on a base four attack. So draw one, draw two, base four, not enough damage. He takes nothing. He's going to hit me for five. And uh, I'm just going to take it. So I'm going to go down to nine. Yeah, because he gets a minus one. Well, five minus one. Oh, but he, got a, he, he drew a plus one, right? Did I draw? Did I draw a card for him? He drew a zero. Okay. So he hit me for... Uh, I'd be down to ten. Hit me for four. Okay. All right. That's that. Um, I don't think I have anything to push him around with. Well, I do. I've got a pull. But... Uh, one, one, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Ugh. Shoot. I can't pull him into the trap. Dang it. It's close. Uh, he's adjacent to none of his enemies, but I'm only going to get an attack three at best, so I'll just do that. Um, so I'll get plus two to my attack. So it's going to be attack five. No advantage. Minus one. Nothing. Oh, I forgot to draw his card. He is going to hit me for five and suffer one damage. Okay. Uh, so I'm down to five. Almost dead. All right. And then I'm going to have to do a short rest on my turn. And that means I lose a card by default. Whichever one gets picked, it happens to be that one. Um, Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, huh. Don't have a trap to play with, so we might as well move fast. I would rather keep the advantage. I'd rather keep that. I'd rather keep the pull. Um, hmm. So let's move five and heal three, and we'll go with that. All right. One, two, three, four, five, and uh, make sure he's going first because I'm going at 11. He's going at 11, so I'll go first. Um, and then I'll heal three. One, two, three, done. And then he goes, retaliate three, range three. Does nothing. He didn't even move. Ugh! This guy is killing me with his not moving. I mean, all I need is for him to move. That would be just fantastic. And he won't do it. Um, we'll go at 86 and see if we can get lucky. And what does he do? He goes at 51. He is going to move 1, 2 three and hit at minus one minus one so five 
four, three, puts me down to five. And unfortunately, that did not, he moved too far. Oh my gosh, this guy. I can't jump over him, I can't go around him, I can't push him. If I'd played that card, I'd have been okay. Um, yeah, it's just not, it's not going to work. Do I have a good attack? Three, six attack. Not not gonna be enough to kill him. Shoot. I can't move through him. I could try to hit him. Attack three. Oh, there's a pierce three. So now I have three shield to go through. Uh and a and a hit, so six total damage. Um and three are pierce. So I actually got three damage on him. That's pretty nice. I'll take that. And then I am... I'm not going to move. I'm going to stay right there. And I'm going to make him move into that trap. Because I'm going to try to do something. At least. And we'll see what happens. I'm going to go at 3 to make him move into that trap. He's going at 28. He's probably going to kill me. That's okay. Uh, so I'm going to move here. And force him into that trap. Which does another... Five damage. Um, I didn't get a five token. Two, three, four, five. So he's now at. Uh, he's actually at 12 damage. He only needs a few more. And that trap is gone. So I effectively used one. Nice. And. Uh, and then I will hit at disadvantage. Whoops, this should be shuffled. Um, I'm going to hit at disadvantage for two, which isn't going to help much because it's a disadvantage. All right, so one, two, oh, that goes there. I can do that, or I can do that, so it's the same. All right, so he's going to be poisoned with no other... Nothing else really happening there. And he's going to hit me at disadvantage. One, two. So he's hitting for three. And he's hitting at disadvantage. So he's got to take that. So he's hitting me at four. That puts me down to one. I don't think... I'm just immobilized. So now I can't move. And that's all my cards. So we're going to do a short rest. And see what happens here. Boom, short rest, he shuffles. Okay, so there's his shuffle. And it's my turn. Whew, I can't move, so it's it's kill him or or that's I that's it. That's it. I have got to kill him or I am not winning. He is poisoned, so I do get an extra uh, a little extra power on the tart on my hit. So really, a hit of four. It's going to be my best and advantage at three. That's going to be the best I can hope for. All right, he's going at ninety. So advantage hit. I can move four, but I can't move. I'm just going to get the advantage, the plus two, or that. So I'll take six, seven. That's going to get through that. Oh, I was thinking he needed one more damage, but he needed more. Uh, so I got... I got one damage past his shield. So uh, we'll just leave that there and that there. He's still poisoned. He's got 13. And he's going to attack me for... Plus one. That's it. I'm dead. So that is a solo scenario. And if you are familiar with Gloomhaven, you could probably see that 
in my mind, that's fairly difficult. I'm going to double check the rules and see if I'm allowed to level up uh, this uh, scoundrel a little higher. But I'm afraid that by doing that, I have to increase the dungeon level as well. But I may reconsider some of the cards I picked to see what, uh, what I'd come out with. But yeah, that is, uh, that is a solo scenario. Um, I will not reveal the reward if uh, at this point in time. Uh, I'll have to try to beat the scenario. My goal is to beat these scenarios and get the little special dagger for my, my colleagues who are playing a five-player dungeon but don't care about doing these and uh, see, uh, let them have those weapons which are rather still challenging to, to use. Um, I think I might have explained in the pre preliminary video. They're not like OP'd too much, but uh, there you go. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think in the comments. If you uh, have played the solo scenario, I would really love to hear if you saw things that you're like, well, what if you did this? Uh, I don't know that I used my companion very well. Uh, I feel like he died pretty quick in this scenario and I probably could have used uh, him to my, or parts of what he did to my advantage a lot better, but uh, I didn't. And so I'd be curious to know what you would have done differently. Uh, maybe some cards you might have selected differently had you been uh, selecting the cards and if you're familiar with the scoundrel and if you've played this before what has been your experience have you found it to be difficult were you um, were you able to beat it the first try through uh, what what kind of uh, what what did you run into when you played but thanks for watching and have a great afternoon